how to grow a bigger upper and lower body with rings. This video covers a full body calisthenics workout to build muscle. Stick around to the end because you're going to get the full routine including sets, reps, and tips for best results. Dips are the squat of your upper body. You should start your workouts with them when you're full of energy. Dips are the best calisthenics exercise for growing your chest and triceps. Better than push-ups, some would say. Dips are harder by default because you're lifting 100% of your body weight compared to around 70% when doing push-ups on the floor. Core fatigue isn't a limiting factor. You never fail a dip because your abs get tired, whereas on a high rep set of push-ups, your lower back can give out before your chest. This means dips allow you to genuinely push your upper body muscles to their maximum, skyrocketing your progress in your chest and triceps with calisthenics. Once you've outgrown pure body weight exercise, adding weights is better with dips. You can lift heavier when doing dips and there's unlimited potential for progressive overload, making them perfect long-term. Dips give you upper body strength for free. Expect your overhead pressing strength to increase when you do do dips, things like the military press with weights at the gym or handstand push-ups with calisthenics improve as a byproduct of doing dips. Technique-wise, we want to lower down to around 90 degrees where our rear delt is below our elbows. You're going to lock out, turning the rings out at the top to set that consistency for your reps. If possible, deeper is always better because that increased stretch is beneficial for hypertrophy. From a strength perspective, the deeper you go with your dips, the more dominant and controlled you'll be through that deeper range of motion. With dips, you can flare or tuck your elbows. When you flare, it's going to bias more of the chest. If you tuck the elbows, it's going to be more triceps. Choose what suits your goals and what feels most comfortable for your body. Strap length determines the difficulty. A shorter strap is easier and a longer strap is harder because of the instability. It's important that you write this down because what gets measured gets managed and you can accurately know your intensity so that you can change your sets and reps over time when you're doing your dips for reflection and progress. I recommend doing chin-ups instead of pull-ups when using rings. They feel better and they're greater for arm growth. Most people skip chin-ups because they hurt their elbows. The good news is when using rings, they rotate freely and it's not going to cause you any joint or tendon pain like it can happen when doing bar chin-ups. You can't grow a big back and biceps when you're injured or dealing with aches and pains. Rings are the smart option because they mitigate injury before it happens. Chin-ups are a better choice for building big biceps. When we think of biceps, everyone defaults to the bicep curl. Instead, the chin-up should be a primary compound choice for its host of benefits. When training high-intensity chin-ups, the biceps are bearing the burden of controlling your body weight. There's tons of stress, fatigue, and subsequent growth. I'd consider the chin-up as a primary exercise for weekly arm volume. It's scalable with plenty of room to progress long-term. Given the biceps are one of the prime mover muscles in chin-ups, it's no surprise that they get bigger as a result of doing heavy ass chin-ups. The supinated grip with the palms facing towards you has been proven to use more biceps than the pronated pull-up. You know this intuitively from training. Think about how pumped and sore your biceps get after a workout of chin-ups. Now imagine what happens when you're doing plus 20, plus 30, or 40 plus kilo chin-ups. Chin-ups will also grow your upper back muscles huge too. Because of this vertical pulling technique, with the elbows tucked in close to the body, it's great for targeting the mid back and adding thickness. It also is really good for hitting those rotator cuff muscles, those alien ones around your scapula. I want you to keep your chin up technique simple. From a dead hang with the elbows straight, you're going to chin up until the elbows are completely flexed at the top. Should you go chin above the rings or chest to rings? I want you to go as high as you can manage. Once fatigue sets in, your height is going to drop and that's normal. You get strong at the range of motion that you train, so keep that in mind during your workouts. Tempo wise with chin ups, I want you to be explosive on the way up to recruit those high threshold motor units and I want you to use control on the way down to emphasize that eccentric for muscle growth. Ring push-ups are better than floor push-ups for a few reasons. The increased range of motion is where the magic lies. The latest science on bodybuilding shows that an emphasis on the stretch is really important for getting best results. Rings apply the science in practice. Your chest is going to get really sore after a workout, which is a good proxy for growth. Once again, rings feel better on your body. Because of that freedom of movement, you can use a technique that suits your body type, including your flexibility, your limb lengths, your strengths, it's all going to change the way your push-up looks. Contrast this with floor push-ups where your hands are fixed and your body's forced into this rigid technique. No one tells you how to exercise, not even the floor. Weighted ring push-ups are such an underrated exercise. Most people outgrow the bodyweight push-up, doing them with ease. 
This is where weighted ring push-ups come in. It's nice being able to control the intensity of push-ups, adding heavy weight for low reps to build strength, or using moderate weights with moderate reps to build hypertrophy. This way, the push-up is an exercise that can last you forever in terms of muscle size and strength. Technique-wise, I want you to choose a pushing path that suits your body. Between completely flared and completely tucked, somewhere in the scapular plane feels good for most people. You don't have to worry because when using rings, your body is going to naturally default to a position that it feels safe and strong using. Otherwise, move your scapula during push-ups, retract them together on the way down, and spread them apart into protraction at the top. Unlike with the bench press where our scapula is blocked, with push-ups, our scapula is free to move, so be sure to do so. Why are ring push-ups so challenging? Instability, your arms are going to be shaking around everywhere, and that's normal when doing a new exercise. With practice and time, you're going to improve at your ring push-ups, they're going to get more stable, and you're going to do the exercise with control. Ring push-ups are ideal as a secondary exercise in your workout. Most people are stronger in horizontal pressing with push-ups compared to vertical pressing with dips. That's why we've ordered our exercises in this way. Besides, the pre-fatigue from dips is going to make your push-ups more challenging by default and also more stimulative. Exercise order is really important to work out smarter and get better results. Inverted rows are essential in your workout for developing a well-rounded back. They add muscle size to your lats and increase the thickness of the middle of your back. Inverted rows increase relative strength, pound for pound, how good you are at throwing your body around and overcoming gravity. Not only are you able to do cool stuff with your body, but you also look better as a result of inverted rows to get the best of both worlds. Ever wonder why rows are hardest at the top? Rows are what you call a descending strength curve exercise. This explains why the sticking point is always the top as you get fatigued. The takeaway is this, you should use full range of motion until you hit technical failure. Once fatigue sets in, keep doing some stretch partials so that you're training close to muscular failure. If you stop a set of inverted rows once you can't get that full range of motion, you're selling yourself short from a muscular growth perspective. The bros had it right all along. You've got to grind out those final few rows, even if they're not pretty. The advantage of neutral grip rows is it targets the brachialis, the muscle that sits between your biceps and your triceps. For complete arm aesthetics, for arms that hug the sleeves, arms that turn heads, some neutral grip inverted rows will get in some extra bicep volume. Ring rows just feel good. We want to choose exercise that hit our muscles hard, but don't beat up our body. That's a winning combination right there. Get ready for your core strength to improve as a result of inverted rows. I'm talking mainly about the glutes and lower back muscles when saying core in this context. This is a fancy way of saying your core control improves, you'll have better spine stability, and the ability to resist your spine from moving out of position during exercise. Expect your grip strength and forearms to improve with inverted rows. Did you know that a weak grip can be limiting your pulling performance? People with a stronger grip can do more pull-ups compared to people with a weaker grip. With increased performance, there's more muscle and strength gain, so take your grip training seriously. Because inverted rows are usually trained with higher reps with an emphasis on the eccentric, this time under tension equals a gorilla grip. Inverted rows are a high stimulus, low fatigue exercise. There's no axial loading, which means you can stress your muscles without that fatigue that comes from barbell rows, which can keep you exhausted for days. You're getting lots of local muscle stress to spark growth without excessive fatigue to your central nervous system. It's time we work on our six pack abs with the hanging knee raise. Most people skip their abs because they think they can't get bigger. The abs are a muscle just like any other. If you train them progressively, they can hypertrophy. Just doing your compound exercise and thinking that's enough for core strength is a common myth. You can't just do pull-ups or squats and think that your abs are going to get bigger and stronger. We need exercises like the hanging knee raises to overload the abs. Muhammad Ali once said, I don't count my reps. I only start counting when it starts hurting because they're the only ones that count. Wise words that we should apply to our hanging knee raises. This is because the abs are quite a fatigue resistant muscle group. They need plenty of reps and plenty of effort to actually train them properly. You've got to get to the point where you're barely lifting your knees at all. That's a sign of a successful hanging knee raise set. I like knee raises as a core exercise because it's practical to progress with just a dumbbell. You can lift heavier and challenge your core without having to do a million reps, which gets pretty boring. Remember, you don't 
need fancy machines or optimal exercises. Most of these are overkill for the average person. What matters is effort. Effort is the equalizer. Hanging knee raises are going to work if you work. I recommend using an explosive knee raise, squeezing your abs, squeezing your hip flexors, and then controlling the eccentric on the way down using your muscles as brakes. The best way to motivate yourself to work abs is to have a low body fat percentage. I've noticed a trend in gyms. Leaner people tend to do ab exercises more than people who have a high body fat percentage. This is all extra motivation to stay on top of your nutrition so you can enjoy the fruits of your labor when you do ab exercises. Hanging knee raises will increase the size of your abs, but nutrition will reveal the six pack. Catch your breath because we're not done just yet. Let's finish the workout with legs. Ring pistol squats are a smarter choice for bodybuilding. By holding on, we increase stability, allowing us to push our muscles to failure without balance being a limiting factor. The rings also serve to counterbalance the body. Keeping us upright makes the pistol squat more effective for growing your quads. Your job is to keep all of the tension on the legs. Don't rob yourself of gains by helping too much with the hands. Pistol squats are great for bodyweight workouts because they're single leg. The difficulty is doubled because one leg is doing all the work. If you're someone who has a bigger or stronger leg, some muscle asymmetry is completely normal, but pistol squats help us reduce the differences between sides. An additional benefit of pistol squats is increased hip stability, strengthening those glute med muscles on the sides. Because your hip muscles have to work harder during unilateral exercises, this is a benefit that you won't get from normal bilateral squats. The the best sign that you're actually training hard enough is rep speed. On your last few pistol squats, you should be slowing down and struggling to finish the squat. The burn is brutal for high rep pistol squats, but by guiding the movement with the rings, we can squeeze out those ever important, effective final few reps. The hanging leg curl is the best body weight isolation exercise for hamstrings. Think of these as bicep curls for your hamstrings. We're doing knee flexion at the legs to blow up our hammies. You're not skipping curls on arm day. Don't be skipping hamstring curls on leg day either. For perfect technique, keep your hips up like the top of a hip thrust, squeezing your glutes. This plank posture places the most tension on your hamstrings. Where you place the bench influences the difficulty. The further away the bench is from the rings, the more body weight that you'll be pulling with the legs. The problem with body weight leg day is hitting that sweet spot of intensity. You don't want an exercise that's so easy that you're doing 50 reps in order to hit failure or something that's so hard that you're failing after just three reps. It's your job to choose a style of hanging leg curl variation that suits your level. This is going to take some time and experimenting in order to play around with what variation of hamstring curl is right for you. It's simple really, as long as if you're failing within the five to 20-ish rep range, you've got yourself an effective leg day exercise. Cramps in your hamstrings are something that everyone gets with bodyweight leg curls. Because your hamstrings are doing both hip and knee extension, the muscle is being worked over time at the origin and insertion. The best way to overcome cramps is just by doing the hamstring curl. The struggle is worth it for bigger and stronger legs. The sissy squat is the best isolation body weight quad exercise. These are sometimes called natural leg extensions because they mimic the movement of leg extensions at the gym. The sissy squat is the most challenging at the deep stretch when you're all the way at the bottom of the squat. You really want to milk the negative as we say in bodybuilding, going slow on the way down pausing at the bottom and then reversing this for reps. Squatting knees over toes is completely safe. Don't worry about this myth if you're someone with healthy knees and are going to train smart. Sissy squats will actually bulletproof your knees when done progressively. You'll get stronger at the end range and build tissue resilience. When using just our body weight, we've got to get into this awkward position and extreme range of motion in order to be challenged. That's the whole point. Don't forget to squeeze your glutes and thrust the hips Enjoy the pump and burn in your quads when doing strict sissy squats. Although sissy squats are probably hard enough, challenge yourself further by training at a deficit or adding weight to a backpack. When doing sissy squats and holding onto the rings, it applies the principle you learned earlier. Balance isn't a limiting factor, stability is increased, and your quads are doing all the work. This exercise is getting mainstream recognition in bodybuilding for its muscle building potential. Sissy squats are the perfect finisher at the end of your workout. Tons of stress, tons of muscle damage, that deep stretch, all of this is a recipe for building muscle and it's an exercise that will be in your routine for years to come. Here's the complete workout for you guys to follow. 
I recommend two to three minutes rest between sets so that your workout is done in around an hour. Straight sets are recommended. You do all the sets of one exercise before moving on to the next. You can also superset each exercise pair. If you can be bothered adjusting the ring height every time, this is an efficient way to finish the workout sooner. Please do weighted calisthenics if you need the intensity. Follow this full body workout three times a week as this is the sweet spot for work and recovery. If you wanna build muscle with calisthenics, my 18 week body by rings program is for you. Shopfitnessfaqs.com for our complete workouts. See you legends.